Hello, this is Jared from Commit to Quality, and today we're going to go over the basics of test fixtures in Playwright Test. There is a lot to cover on test fixtures, so I'm going to keep this as simple as possible, with future videos then breaking the fixtures down into their own small but useful uses. What exactly are test fixtures? Well, Playwright Test is based on the concept of these test fixtures. They're used to establish environment for each test, giving the test everything it needs and nothing else. And Playwright will look at each test declaration, which, as we know, is just like this. So I've got my test and my declaration here. And you can pass the fixtures in. So if you've seen from my previous video, we use the page fixture a lot. And we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail now. It basically then analyzes the set of fixtures that you have passed into your declaration. And it only uses and needs those fixtures specifically for that test. And Playwright Test basically comes with built-in fixtures. It is worth noting you can add your own as well, which I'll be covering off in plenty of future videos, and you can even configure the existing ones. So uh, stay tuned for more videos on that. If you've watched any of my previous videos or you have any experience with Playwright Test, you're more than likely already using a built-in text fixture, which is probably you're using the page one because that's how you interact with everything. We pass the parameter through and that's all you have to do. So if I was to say page here, that's all I have to do. And then I can start interacting with page. I could say await page. await page dot go to and then I could go to whatever URL I want in this string as simple as that you more than likely have already used this before just to recap all the page fixture is is an isolated and independent page instance which is going to be created for each test like I say it's basically how we interact with the page go to click elements select drop downs screenshot all of that goodness we've touched on page but what are the other built-in fixtures well, you can go to the documentation and you can see them here. You've got browser, browser name, context, page, and request. Before we actually jump into any code, and let's quickly go through what these are. The browser is a browser instance. It's shared between all tests in the same worker, and this then makes your testing a bit more efficient. However, it's good to note, each test runs in an isolated browser context and gets a fresh environment, so you won't be having any conflicts when it, with any of the tests that run in parallel. You've then got the context, which is the isolated browser context instance. This is created for each test. It provides a way to operate multiple independent browser sessions. So when we said page is an isolated instance, this is due to this fixture. It's basically like having a new incognito session each time. And since contexts are isolated between each other, every test gets a fresh environment, even when multiple tests run inside a single browser. And that's for maximum efficiency for example parallelization you've then got the browser name here this basically spits out the browser name being used this can be useful for combining things with annotations uh, i've had i have an annotation video out so i'll put the link into the video uh, link into the description and onto the screen now for you and then finally, we have this requests uh, fixture. And this is used for kind of the web API testing, basically does what it says. It makes the requests. Awesome. So that's just some in information about the fixture, the built-in fixtures we have. So now you have a bit of example. Let's actually go in and write a test without using any fixtures, and then we'll convert it to using the built-in fixtures. Okay, cool. So we're inside. Let's get rid of this page fixture because I want to show um, this. So we'll say this test can be called without fixtures. And it might look a little bit messy because that's the point. The fixtures are going to make it a lot easier because the setup is done behind the scenes. So first of all, then let's create a browser because we need to um, have access to it. So we'll say create a Chrome browser. In here, I'm going to say const browser equals await chromium dot launch. And all that's doing, as it says, is creating a new browser. Next, then, we want to create a new isolated context, which we just talked about. So let's say create isolated context. 
And here we can say const context equals await browser dot new context. Awesome. Now we want to create our page. So obviously this would all be done inside the page fixture, but in this case we need to do something. So create a page. So we can say uh, let's call it const page equal oh, equals await context dot new page. Uh, we want to do something, so let's go to Amazon. We always like Amazon on here, so we'll say await page dot go to, and we'll say HTTPS Amazon dot co dot UK. Awesome. So in this, at just at the moment, all we've done is we've had to create a new browser. We needed to create an isolated test context, and then we create a page based off that context, and it's going to Amazon. Let's run this. So I'm just going to, I think this is the only test I have, but I'll do dot only. Let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so we'll say npx playwright test, and we'll say debug. Hit enter on that, and we'll wait for that to load. Okay, there we are. So uh, the page is loaded up, and if I just continue over, it's going to Amazon. It's just going to wait for that to load, and it'll finish. Okay, cool. So all that just to get to the Amazon page. Next, then, let's do something with the context. So um, let's say uh, we'll remove the cookies. So we'll say use context to remove cookies. So what I want to do is, first of all, output the cookies so we can see that it's actually doing something. So I can say console.log. console.log and I'll say await context cookies so that's just going to spit them all out into our log for us and then we'll add another console.log just to make it a bit prettier and we'll say uh, after clear so it's going to spit them out it's then going to say after clear and then we want to clear the cookies so I can say await oh, caps lock await context dot clear cookies there we are that method's built into the context for us and then we want to output the cookies again which then we should see basically nothing because we've cleared all the cookies let's run this and see what happens so i'm not going to run in debug mode i'm just going to let it run because we don't need to watch anything on the screen Awesome. So here we go. You see, after the clear, there's nothing. And before we had all these cookies. So we can see there, it's a simple use of the context where we can grab the cookies and clear them. There's much more use to the context class. However, that's a very basic and quick example of how to use it. So next, I want to say then, I want to create another new isolated browser context. So let's do that. Let's say, create another new isolated context and here we'll say create a new iso a new isolated context and here I can say const and I'll say context two equals await browser dot new context uh, we want to create a page to work with so I'll say const page two equals await context two dot new page and we want to go somewhere with this one so let's say await page two dot go to and we'll use google for this one okay so we go into Google. So in this case, what we're saying now is we want to create a new browser with a new context, which goes to the Google page. So we'll put a page.pause here so you can see it. Great. Let's run that in debug mode as well. And we'll see what happens. 
Okay, so let's continue over this so we get to the page.post because we know all this part works. Okay, so I'm going to step over and here you go now. We've got our new context which has opened up in a new browser because it's an independent session. If I step over, we'll see this one now goes to Google and we have those two independent sessions running. And there we are. It's really as simple as that. Now we have two um, classes we need to go over, the request and the browser name. So let's do a request because I already have something lined up for this. So make a request. Okay, so we're going to say make a request. So let's say const rec for request equals uh, await page dot request dot get and I already have a URL I want to hit. I'll paste this into the description as well so you can see you can try it yourself. Let me just grab that. Okay, so we go into the JSON placeholder which is just going to make a get request and with this then we can grab the response. So I'll say const res for response equals await rec dot json which is going to grab the json body and uh we just want a console dot log it then don't we so we'll say console dot log res so we should be seeing something there i'm going to remove my pause because we don't need that now and all this is doing is making that get request so let's run that test without debug There we are. So that's the response we've been uh, passed back with use ID, title, and completed. So we can see that request has been made, which is great. And last but not least, the browser name, which I believe you can say console.log directly on this. And we could say await browser. And we could say underscore name. Let's save that and let's run this again. And we should see the browser name is spat out and there we are we've got chromium which has been passed out because that's the browser we're using so as you can see we've just created a test without using any test fixtures but there was a lot of code for the setup a lot of kind of waffling around of to get to what we needed to do and we can make things a lot easier for ourselves by using fixtures so let's let's do that let's copy this test now and we're going to replace the code inside the test body with the fixtures version. So let's do it one by one. So we'll do with fixtures here. Let's take the only off the without because we don't care about that anymore. And let's go through this fixture by fixture to set up what we need to do. So the first thing we want to do is set up the page. We can bring that directly through. So if I say page, what we can do here is we can delete all of this because it's already being set up for us. We say in, go to the Amazon page. So we've already teared down a lot of the setup code. But now what we're gonna see is it's kicking off because there's no context there. So we could bring in the context. We can say, along with the page fixture, I wanna clear the cookies and read the cookies. So let's bring in context. And what we see now is, that all should work fine, of course. We've still got some broken issues because we're trying to create a new browser down here. So we can do that. We can say, right, bring in the browser fixture. Let's fix that. And that's now going to do what we wanted to before, where we've created new context on it and we go into the Google page. And we have request and browser name left. What I can say is bring in the request fixture save that and although this is still working because it's using page we don't need to do that anymore we can say just make it a request using the fixture so let's get rid of that page and we're good to go on this part and then we've got the browser name so instead of having to do browser underscore name we can bring in the browser name fixture here save that Go down and we can just say await browser name. We only bring in the fixtures we need to use. So if I wasn't making a request, I could delete this and of course delete the request information here. But it looks a lot tidier now and Playwright is controlling what to set up 
what to tear down, what fixtures we need to bring in, which should make our testing more efficient. Let's say NPX player at test. i tell you what, we'll even do it in headed mode so we can see it. So let's just quit out of that and pass through the headed flag. And we should see it's all good to go. And we've tidied it up a lot. Ooh, load on another page. Let's bring that over. So it loaded Amazon. It's now opened up the new context, which is Google. Close it all down. And we can see here that we've still cleared the cookies. We've still made our request. And we've output um, the browser name. Of course, that's coming from the Playwright config now. So we're running Chromium. We can change that. We can do what we want. But now the test doesn't have to have all this set up. We've got it coming directly through the fixtures. So we are focused on only what we want to do in that single test. Like I said, there's plenty more we can do with fixtures. There's a lot of methods on these kind of classes we can use as well. So stay tuned for future videos for those. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them below. A like and subscribe is appreciated. And thank you for watching and have a good day.